Our body is our most valuable resource. Without it, we, we can't do anything. We're literally stuck behind the wheel of a car that doesn't drive if our body's not working correctly. Welcome to the Rebel Health Coach Podcast with Tom Underwood. Armed with truth and knowledge, your journey to a healthy lifestyle can be obtained. Preventative wellness, quality nourishment, and daily fitness routines dramatically improve your outlook on life as a whole. And you'll find the support and info you need to accomplish a healthier lifestyle here. Together, we can empower each other along our journey to an amazing you. Today's guest on the Rebel Health Coach podcast is Jay Nixon. Jay is a speaker, author, mentor, and coach whose mission is to help each and every person achieve their absolute best. He is the owner of the Thrive Fitness Studio in Palm Desert, California, and the grateful leader of the Thrive Tribe, a collection of Jay's current and former clients who work together to improve their health and their fitness and their lives. Recognized as a Lululemon ambassador and dubbed by CBS News as one of the best fitness and nutrition experts in the business, Jay has been featured on ABC and Fox and in the Triathlete magazine. When he's not working with clients one-on-one, you'll find him consulting for Fortune 1000 companies in the nutrition and fitness industry. Jay's book, The Overweight Mind, The Undeniable Truth Behind Why You're Not Losing Weight, is an Amazon bestseller with over 80 five-star reviews. I am grateful you have taken the time out of your busy schedule to join me today. Tom, I'm glad to be here, man. I always love like-minded people like you. Anytime I get a, a chance to collaborate, I love it. Yeah, man, that's that's my forte. And I, I just try and get the word out to as many people as possible. Did you know when I was researching your name that you know you have a state park named after you in Missouri? You know, the funny thing is, is there's the governor of Missouri's <laughs> name is Jay Nixon. And so I get that all the time. <laughs> I, was like, <laughs> I was actually, funny, quick story. This is, it's totally unrelated, but you'll get a kick out of it. I was on the phone with my cable company maybe five or six years ago. And I said, you know, hey, this is Jay Nixon, blah, blah, blah. And all of a sudden, the lady on the other end of the phone just went completely silent. And she was like, can I ask you a question? And I'm like, sure. She's like, are you our governor? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like no, it's different Jay Nixon. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Before we dive into the topic of the overweight mind, I'd like you to take a few minutes and Tell the listeners about yourself and how you got into this realm of fitness and nutrition. I know I noticed your LinkedIn profile and you went to college for nursing. Mm -hmm, Absolutely. And in Texas. Yep, in Texas. Yeah, I've always been, even as a little kid, I've been fascinated with like science and the human body. And just, you know, when I was a little kid, I thought, you know, I'll be a doctor because I just want to dig into. I love like comparative vertebrate anatomy and anything scientific I love. And I was also an athlete. I played football in college, started lifting weights when I was in the sixth grade. So it was just a natural progression to me to, to morph into, you know, synergy between nutrition and fitness and the mind and, you know, just the human body and how it grows and works and, and you know, does everything it does. I'm fascinated by it. That's cool. Let's talk about the overweight mind a bit. But before we do, I want to go into... What is it like being a nutritionist to the celebrities out there in in Palm Desert? You know what? It's cool, man. It's it it, that part of it's really is interesting. Um, But you know, it's being just able to help anyone and everyone. I get actually more pleasure out of probably helping out the average person because they don't have the normal resources that a celebrity does, and so it gives me more grat. You know, I'm get I'm more grateful and thankful to be able to help just average people like myself than I am, you know, the celebrity right. clientele that you get that you get access to. It's, you know, it's kind of a different animal. Right. Okay. We often talk about nutrition, about and nutrition, about our food and what we are consuming and movement and exercise as, as what you do a lot of, but one, well, I often find myself repeatedly diving into is the mindset and in, in life things, which is why I loved your book, the overweight mind so much. Is because I found myself saying, yes, 
Finally. So what is the overweight mind? You know, it's really my, I wrote the book and, and the overweight mind is, is my belief system over the, you know, doing this for the last 20 plus years of, of really what the problem is. It's what's causing people their issues with their, you know, their systemic weight gain and their problems and things of that nature. You know, it's the three pound monster in between our ears that is, that is the bigger problem than a hundred pounds of overweight or, you know, body fat that we carry. And until we get the mind under control, we'll have very little success long term keeping that weight under, you know, losing weight or even keeping the weight off. So really it's it's my belief that it's the problem. The overweight mind is right. the issue. It's not the food. It's not it's not the lack of exercise or the wrong exercise or the wrong food. It's until we get that mindset under control, we're going to struggle with our weight. Yeah, I agree. And a lot of people have a difficult time getting to that point where it's like, okay, what do we do here? And, and in your book, you mentioned the Biggest Loser contestants. And I really wish that NBC would do a show uh, like, where are they now? Uh, me too. But I don't see that happening for political purposes. No. But I, I don't know what the percentage is, but a majority of them have gained their weights back, gained their weight back. Yeah, statistically, it's really high. I mean, it's it's definitely over half of the participants have gone back to where they started, or even even worse, because you know it's it's not a real thing. It's not a practical everyday thing that that show you know portrayed. And because of that, it's like the the mind body connection is involved there, and you know it, that takes me you know that takes me to the word diet, <laughs> right? You know. Diet to me is a four letter word, and I've been corrected about that on a few shows, but I still believe the word diet is a four letter word because A, it has an expiration point, it has a starting point and an end point. 100%. And, you know, we're one, almost one month into the new year. Statistics show that 21.4% make a resolution of losing weight, but yet 80% of them fail by the 1st of February. Right. Let's talk about the the diet, the word the diet, and what what is your point, what is your view on that word? Well, I think I mean you hit the nail on the head. Like you're not going to get any argument from me there. I think it is the it's the biggest lie in the fitness and nutrition industry. It's if if diets truly worked, then there wouldn't be a million different diets, and there wouldn't be you know I get this kick out of I get I talk to people all the time and they're like I'm like well what have you been doing to get your weight under control? And they'll say, well, I'm going to do Weight Watchers again. And I say, again? And they'll say, yeah, yeah, I'm going to do it again. And I'm like, well, how many times have you done it? They're like, oh, like 22 or something like that. I'm like, well, that should tell you that's not working for you. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? That's a broken... So the diet is a broken formula in my mind. And you hit the nail on the head too with there's this thing we're doing. Like this, we should all be living healthy lifestyles, which does not have an end point. I write about it in my book. There is no end point to being your best self. And so I believe that that's one of the reasons diets fail is because they have a starting date and an ending date. And even if you do achieve, let's just, you know, quote unquote, what you wanted to achieve, you're probably going to gain the weight back. It's, I mean, we see it statistically over and over and over again. Right. And I mean, a lot of it has to do with the body movement part too. And I mean, I'm not going to knock Weight Watchers because it does help some people. Uh, I back when I started my journey, I tried Nutrisystems yeah. until I realized that that was just portion control, and, and most everything that I was eating from Nutrisystem was nothing but processed food. Right. So I know Nutrisystems will probably come after me with a lawsuit someday for dogging on them. But well, I agree with you, and I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying Weight Watchers isn't a functional <clears throat> product. It, it it can work. But unless you change your mindset and the right. mental reasons why you do things, it's not a long-term solution. Right. So if you, combine, if you combine mindset change and getting your, your mind right with Weight Watchers, then, hey, the sky could be the limit. Like You could really have some massive success, but that's not a, that's not a big part of their program. And so, therefore, the success rate isn't as high as it could be. Okay, let's go into that mind thing a little bit. Uh, I, one quote I loved in the book <laughs> was the, in the eater's remorse chapter Yeah, was this spy who shagged me quote from the fat bastard about, I can't stop eating. 
I eat because I'm unhappy and I'm unhappy because I eat. It's a vicious cycle. It's so true. I mean, I talk to clients. I mean, you do too in your, in your work. You, we talk to clients all the time that they eat and, and, and that, you know, they eat a bag of potato chips or a giant tub of ice cream or whatever. And they, and then they feel worse than they did before. And so this is a reason why, and this shows us that they're not eating because they're hungry. They're eating because there's some emotional or mental component that's driving them toward that, that comfort of that food, even if it's in the moment, even if it's in the moment. Yep. Right. I agree. I mean, I'm not, it's, it's a struggle. And a lot of the struggle sometimes is like, I find a lot of people at the gym that are coming like right out are there to lose weight, but yet they're embarrassed to be there because they believe everybody's looking at them. I get that all the time. People have said, Oh, I, I can't work out around people. And I always say, listen, like people have got their own stuff. Like nobody's looking at you and judging you. They're too busy judging themselves. Right. We're, we're usually our own worst critic. I mean, wouldn't you agree with that? Right, exactly. And you and I are both pro. We've been go- I've been going to the gym since I've been working out since I was in the sixth grade. I'm 43 years old. And I'm, when I'm there, I'm not judging anybody. Like I'm there, you know, working on myself, like working on my own growth and working on my own development. And I would say that that's probably true for 95% of people that go to a gym. And, right. and, I, and I, I use this to help people who fear judgment. I've never in my life been judged by someone who's doing more than I am. Right. You know what I mean? Like successful people usually aren't judging other people because they're too busy working on themselves and being successful. If you get judged, it's usually because by someone who feels negatively about themselves anyway. Right. So don't worry about judgment. Yeah. And that's what I try and tell my clients is like, look, you're there doing it. Yeah. And there's a lot of people that won't do that. So just enjoy the process. Yeah. Give yourself a high five. Right. All right, let's talk about one of my pet peeves is the why. Mm -hmm. Is how do we find or how do we make that big, that why big enough to make lasting change? I'm with you on this. Like a lot of people, I talk about this all the time. Like until you know your why, until you have like a bigger purpose for doing something, most people don't make big, big shifts and big changes. But I think even with the why, something that has to come along with that is, is the actual real and true and honest decision behind the why. Like a lot of people say, well, I'm going to do that. You talked about it with the New Year's resolutions. Like I'm going to do it this year. I'm going to do it this year. Well, I'm going to do it after this. Or I'm going to do it. And they keep trying and failing and trying and failing. And it's like you said, it's because their why is not strong enough. What's that driving force that gets you to want to make that change? For some people, it may be like a, you know, a major lifestyle shift. Like you get a bad diagnosis and it's do or die time. For others, it's their children. They want to live, you know, longevity for that. Like, there's got to be something bigger than you that gets you, that moves you through that. Right. A lot of my listeners know about my past. And, and when I was diagnosed in 2007 with metabolic syndrome and the same disease that killed my father, that was my why. Right. That's strong. Yeah. And most of our physicians today, not God bless them because they're in this, they're in that work trying to help people, but a lot of them will just throw medication at you and send you out the door and not explain the process. So that takes me to another question. And what did, let's talk about hiring. Why, if you have a, if your why is to lose weight because you have a disease, let's talk about hiring somebody like myself or yourself to help you with the process. I mean, a lot of people go with that. A lot of people are like, well, that's a waste of my money. Uh, you know what? I'm a firm believer that the the best investment you'll ever make is an investment in yourself. And that's, I'm a, I'm a huge, I spend a lot of money every year on coaching, right. whether it be, you know, for my business or for my own mindset or for my own growth and development. And it, it's, it's paid off so exponentially. I couldn't even put a number on it. Right. It's been so valuable. And so I would, I would say to you this, that, an investment in yourself and an investment in your growth and working with a coach of any kind is always a good investment if you're willing to dig in and do the work and, and get the help that you need. I'll give a perfect example. I'm not good at very much, Tom. Like, I don't know. I'm not a mechanic. I'm not a handyman. I'm not anything. But I'm smart enough to know that I'm not good at those things. And if I need those things done, I go and I look for an expert. Right. So in life, like, you know, if your car breaks down, you go find an expert. 
well, your body's more valuable than your car. If your body's breaking down, go find an expert and get them to help you. Exactly. And I, to, to your point, like one of the, I'm always, in, I'm, I always hire somebody to, to, or to coach me with my business, to coach me with my head games that I play. Yeah. Also, I mastermind groups, you know, or, you know, like writing. I, I failed English one, 101 in college. You know, I aced calculus one, two, and three, but I failed English. So I hire people to write my copy. And why not? That's what, yeah. Yeah. You, I, I always say stay in your lane. You know, you're really good at a lot of stuff. And if you spent your time working on the things that you weren't that good at, it would take away from the things that you're really good at. Right. Exactly. You know, and so for those of you guys listening, I just want to drive home this point. Like there's no shame and there's no, there's no, there's no negative to hiring someone that can help you get further faster, can help you get a better command of your body. I mean, our body is our most valuable resource. Without it, we, we can't do anything. Like it's, we're, we're literally, you know, we're literally stuck behind the wheel of a car that doesn't drive if our body's not working correctly. Right. And to your point, I mean, God gave us an amazing body inside of us. Yeah. And it was meant to filter, you know, your liver is meant to filter out the toxins. But in today's society, our liver is overloaded with toxins. Absolutely. So there's a lot of things going on that, and that need to be corrected. So, you know, it, it doesn't invest in yourself. Just invest in yourself is a good point. To sign up for my monthly newsletter, text RHCP, that's Rebel Health Coach Podcast, or Red Hot Chili Peppers, to 22828. Again, that's RHCP to 22828. Thank you and have an awesome day. Let's talk about the scale. I mean, a lot of people, and I'm one of those that get on the scale after a weekend to see if I, you know, like if I'm going on a fishing trip this weekend and I get on the scale on Monday to see did the, how many of those beers actually cause my scale to go up, you know? Yeah. Yep. But numbers, numbers in, in, in diet are almost, it's almost a, a, you know, a voodoo. Right. You know, it's like, because calories, we talk about calories a lot. We talk about the number, the weight, gaining weight the scale. I'm a big believer and I don't know what you, I'd like to hear your take, but I'm a big, big believer in how do you feel and how do you look? I'm, I'm way bigger on mindfulness and, and, and like you said, how you feel and how you look at yourself in the mirror than I am the scale. Like we use the scale in my studio and in my business, but only as a starting metric, just so, cause that person always wants to know whether they want to know at the beginning or not. When I get them to lose 50, 60, 70 pounds, then they want to know, hey, what was that number? But I don't like it. Like I would rather someone get really... And I preach this nonstop in my programs. I want you to be really mindful right. of how you feel after you eat, how you felt before you eat, how you felt after your workout, before your workout, when you went to sleep, when you woke up. In, in this day and age, like we're such a, a quick fix, instant gratification, social media, you know, cell phone society. We're not mindful anymore. We don't even know how we feel. Like if you ask 10 people today, hey, how you feel? They'd be like, what does that mean? <laughs> like I got, I got a bunch of likes today and I know I got some cool emojis, <laughs> but I have no idea what, you want, what, you, what you're talking about. How do I feel? And so I really try to get my clients to slow the process down. Right. And let's don't focus on that, that digital number on the scale. Let's focus on you and the way your body starts to feel. Right. That's the win. Boom. Exactly. You can drop your mic now. <laughs> The bridge, this is another one from your book. The bridge between your current self and your desired self can be built with three main elements. What are those three elements? You know, it's, it's one of those things that I believe that whenever you're, you're looking at stuff like this, so the bridge between, I want to explain kind of what I was talking about with like your, your current self and your, and your reality. So a lot of times we don't really live as, as what we were designed to live. Like most, we, like you said a while ago, your body is designed to, you know, be the most spectacular machine on the planet. Like it is the, it's the best operating system that will ever be created. It can heal itself. It can repair itself. 
It can do any and all things. We just don't do those things with it. So I believe that going from your current, from your current state to your, you know, your current self to your desired self, you need really three elements. You need to first make a decision. Like you have to make a, a firm... And I'm not talking about that decision like, oh, you know, I'm probably going to... I'm going to try to lose some weight this year. Like that's not good enough. I'm talking about a firm, hard, fast decision. Like I'm going to lose 37 pounds by June the 1st of 2018. And this is how I'm going to do it. And secondly, after you make that decision, you need consistency. You've got to be consistent with the decision that you made. Too often when adversity pops up and things get tough, we like to kind of, you know, give ourselves the out and give ourselves the excuse to not be so, you know, hard on ourselves. So decision, consistency, and then after that is resolve. You've got to understand that you're going to have to push through that adversity that I talked about. I always say the road to success is always under construction. Oh, man. You're going to hit some obstacles. You're going to hit some roadblocks. You're going to hit some things. Like Life will show up, but if your resolve is strong enough, you'll be able to get through anything. And so those are my three elements that I believe that how you get from your current self to your desired self. Nice. Yeah, I, I, you're getting, getting no argument I mean, with me from there. I mean, that decision, consistency, and resolve are very important. I really want to go ask you a question about uh, your thoughts on a quote from Heather Morgan, that every time you eat or drink, you are feeding disease or fighting it. Yeah, I, w- I, wouldn't, I wouldn't argue with that at all. You know, I talk about in my book that, you know, are, are you... Are you are you fueling yourself or, you know, you're feeding yourself? So food is meant to be, beverages are meant to be fuel for our bodies. And so I think she's right. I mean, every time you consume something, you're either benefiting your body or you're causing your body to have to work hard to eradicate whatever it is. And I think the perfect example of this is, is sugar. I think sugar is the most addictive substance on the planet. And so anytime someone is over-consuming sugar, going into carbohydrate intoxication, if you will, your body is having to go through a laundry list of hormonal and enzymatic and just chemical processes to get that junk out of your system. You know, your liver, your kidneys, your pancreas, like there's so many things involved, but as humans, we think, oh, it goes in my mouth, in my stomach and out the other end. They don't realize the, all the, everything else that it's, dramatically impacted. So I think she's right. Yeah, I agree. All right. I really like in your book, the power action steps at the end of each chapter. What are three action steps we can leave the listeners with today? One of mine for you is to go get this book, especially for the people who are starting the new year off and want to really make this work and, and get your, you know, work on your why. But also this book has a lot of amazing information in it for people that have done the Weight Watchers 10, 15 times or Jenny Craig or a laundry list of different diets. But one of my action steps is for the listeners to go get the book. Well, I appreciate that. You know what? It just came out in audio as well. So if you're someone who doesn't like to, to physically read and you love to listen, uh, the audio book version just actually came out last week. Did you do the audio yourself? I did. I did. It was wow. It was an experience, my man. It was... T- it was it was something that I now have a, a newfound respect for anyone who uses their voice as a tool because, yeah. it's, you know, it's, it, is, it, was a, it was a long, long day. <laughs> I'll bet. Because you, did you read it? Yeah. I mean, did you have to read through it? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's literally, you're in, you're in like a closet and it's on a, it's, you know, it's on the big screen in front of you. You're, you know, you got a mic right in your face, you know, very similar to what you're doing right now. And you are literally reading it verbatim, word for word. You know, and you can't be boring. You can't read, say, you know, oh, this is such, you know, blah. you got to be, you know, you got to be inflective and you got to be, you got to, you know, over enunciate. And I'm from the South. And so I don't always pronounce words properly. <laughs> you know? And so, you know, I'd, I'd be, you know, when my Southern accent would get fired up, the, the sound engineer would, you know, he'd come in my mic and my headphones and be like, okay, we got to record that again. And so, you know, <sighs> yeah, sometimes you're recording the same sentence over and over again, but it's, you know, you want to, you know, you're like me. I want to produce a product that people absolutely love and, you know, can listen to with no background noise, no side effects. I mean, the, the finished product is absolutely fantastic. I couldn't be more excited, but it was a, it was an experience. I'm glad I did it, but it was a challenging. How day. long did it take you? It took me about nine hours from start to finish. Wow. 
And, and, and just so you guys give, have a notion, I think the total listen time is about three hours and 13 minutes. So three hours and 13 minutes, which if you buy the book, and it took me about nine hours to do. That's how, you know, that's the, that's the challenge of it. <laughs> well, I, I know from my side as a, in the podcast world that I like, I pre-record your intro. Yeah. And I just read in your bio, but that takes me a couple times to get it it's, right. It's not as easy as you would think. And, you know, it's, it's one of those things that like, well, you wrote the book. Why, why wouldn't it be that easy? And it's like, you'll find that you don't, you don't speak like you write. And then, and then when you're, when you're, even you're reading your own words, like I've read this and I've, I've said these things so many times that I have little different spins on them and little different yeah. runs on them. And I would read the, I would, I would say the sentence and the guy, the engineer would be like, um, Hey Jay, that's not even on the page. <laughs> my mind would be like, okay, right. I want to tell, I want to tell a story. Right. Cause you know, you're like me, you're, you're, you know, you're a podcaster. I'm a storyteller. Like I love to still tell stories and right. get people excited and I would just start to go off on my brain, would take me off on a tangent and it wouldn't be even be on the page. Wow. <laughs> so it was fun though. It was a good time. But, but, you know, action steps that I think that really would, will make a giant difference in, in people's lives. You got to get clarity, guys. You, clarity around what it is that you truly want, I think is one of the most powerful things that you can have. If you truly desire to lose weight, get healthy, whatever label you want to put on it, get really, really clear and really specific on what it is that you desire. Like, don't be vague about it. There's a quote that I like, and it says that the universe or life punishes the vague wish and rewards the specific ask. So be very specific as to what you want. That's number one. Number two is I believe in just taking massive action. And I don't, it doesn't have to be action that is grandiose, but every day, if you will take action in the direction of whatever it is you want, you'll, you'll eventually get it. But most of the time as humans, that remember the road to success is, full, is, is under construction always. Construction will pop up, adversity will pop up, and that will prohibit us or stop us in our tracks and not let us make that, that move forward. When adversity pops up, move past it, move through it. And lastly, there's never anything that's happened in your life that you haven't gotten through. You know what I mean? As bad as it's ever been, you've always gotten through it. Or you wouldn't be listening to Tom and I today, and Tom and I wouldn't be here today. And we've all been through some crazy stuff in our lives. Like nobody's life is, is without challenge. So just remember that when, the, when things get tough, and I said a quote today in the studio with my clients and that they loved it. And so I'm going to share it with you guys. It's not more than you can handle. It just might be more than you expected. Meaning, when life pops up, you can handle it. Just because it's more than you expected, don't let that deter you. And this is a lot of times what happens on our weight loss journey. It's harder than we thought it was going to be. So it's simply just more than you expected. But remember, you've always gotten through it. So just keep going. Man, perfect. Perfect. Hey, where can people find you? Um, the book can be found at theoverweightmind.com. And then my business is Thrive Fitness Studio. So T-H-R-I-V-E fitnessstudio.com. I'm on all the social media platforms as either Thrive Fitness Studio or Jay Nixon and not the governor of Missouri. Jay, it's always Jay Nixon Fitness. <laughs> all right. I'm going to put those links in the show notes. Thank you, Tom. Before we go, I, this is a question I ask everyone I interview. Is, and they, given an hour to sit and relax, what album or artist do you listen? Would you listen to? Man, I love that question. I am such a. I have got probably the most eclectic music, whatever, but likes it of anybody on the planet. I grew up in Texas, so I really like country. But I also like. I'm a big hair band guy for some reason. I'm 43 years old, and I always say that if I had, if I could, if I was lived in a past life, I would have been like an 80s hair band guy. Like I would have been in Poison or Kiss or Rat. <laughs> Or something like that. So it would probably be, it would probably be poison. Like, look what the cat dragged in. Like <laughs> the album that I threw on. I'm just, wow. I'm, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, it's funny you say that because I was uh, John Bon Jovi. I just saw him on something. The guy's gray. The guy's yeah. turning gray on us. Yeah, yeah, that's I crazy. Know. 
Love hair bands, though, man. Yeah, it's weird. I love yeah country, hair bands were awesome, man. <laughs> country music and hair bands. Yeah, I mean, country music and hair any, bands. Doesn't get any different than that. So yeah. that shows you how my brain works. Oh, man, thank you so much. I am grateful for you taking the time out to be with me today and share your book. Like I said, this book is amazing. I highly recommend checking out The Overweight Mind. The link will be in the show notes. Jay, thanks so much, brother. Tom, thanks for having me, brother. Thank you for joining in today with the Rebel Health Coach, Tom Underwood. And be sure to subscribe to the show so you can catch all the episodes. With desire and commitment, you can implement a lifestyle of wellness and fitness. For the support, encouragement, and tools you need to be successful, visit TomUnderwood.net.